that, you know, we talk about PTSD, you know, and I, of course I've been working this, I'm working with helping people with their minds, my mind, my ex-wife's mind, my children, everybody you can think of, you know, and I, I, I keep looking at this PTSD. What is PTSD really? I mean, what is the real deal? And of course the experts out there don't know really what it is either. You know, it's of course post-traumatic stress disorder, right? Disorder means not working right. Isn't that right? You go to the machine and you, and you try to put change in it and it's not giving you anything. It's got a disorder. It's out of order, not working. But the truth is post-traumatic stress disorder is not a disorder. It is a disorder to people who don't know how to solve it. Does that make sense? Like if my, my next door neighbor who's a plumber named Philip. He's got this big fat belly and a t-shirt with Beavis and Butthead on it. He's a plumber, right? Now, he, if your pipes are clogged or if you need a sink replaced or a toilet r removed and adjusted, you know, he could do the job. <laughs> I could just see in my mind, oh yeah, he's got a plumber's crack too because he's a big old boy, you know? But if you go to him and you say, hey man, I've got hot, I got sweats at night, I'm having panic attacks, I've got some things going on, you know what he's going to say? There's something wrong with your pipes. Something ain't working right in there. It, you got a disorder. Now you go to a professional system who do not know how the mind works, how to update and change memories. You know what they're going to say? You got a disorder because I can't fix it. So what are we going to do? We're going to talk about it for 30 years? Make my house payment? I'll give you a sack of drugs. That's how it works. Unfortunately, they don't know. Now, there are some really good, uh, on, these are good people. They went to training. They made straight A's or hopefully straight A's in their universities and they got a degree. Still good people, but they weren't trained to do something that actually works. You know, just like when, when Antonio, he was saying, you know, he watched my videos with somebody doing addiction. I know how it works. I know how to change memories. And then they're not addicted because they have a, a repulsion to the drug. So uh, what is really post-traumatic stress? D, I would say defense, because that's really what the brain is trying, is trying to do, protect you. This response is a defense system. It's trying to keep you safe. So here it is, you're pumping gas, putting gas in your car, and you look up, and there's an accident and somebody gets killed in front of you, right? Boom, trauma. Now, you go to the doctor, the psychologist says you got post-traumatic stress disorder. Something's not working now. Is that really the case? The answer is no. There's, there's an innate system within each and every one of us to survive. And that is why it's happening. It's a defense system. And so, now, when you think about it, you know, Maria, when she was a little girl, she, I don't even know Maria too well. I'm making this story up. Maria, just so the rest of you know, Maria is at school. She's in kindergarten or first grade. And one of her little kindergarten friends says, Maria, won't you come to my house? And so at the end of the school, she just decided to just go to straight to her friend's house and play dolls and all this stuff. Well, mom is at home thinking, oh my God, someone stole Maria. Something bad happened to her. And you know when Maria comes home, she gets an ass whooping. She says, go pick the switch. I mean, you had to pick a switch. This is a trauma. This trauma is an education on how to survive. Maria got an education. She says, you go straight home. You don't go to your friend's house after school. That is a PTSD, which means next time her friend says, can I go, will you come to my house? She said, no, I don't think so. <laughs> I'm going home because I know there's something bad's going to happen if I do go home with you. So this is a trauma, post-traumatic stress defense system. It's also an education. So here it is. If you've been, you know, there's so many different, we all have this in our life. We all have had, had some things happen, big ones and little ones. And these educate us, you know, the little girl playing on the swing and she knocks her front teeth out. And all, that's a trauma for her. She lost her front teeth and now she had a, made a decision. I'm ugly, no one will ever love me. And from that point forward, this experience of falling and knocking her teeth out, that's a trauma, which is also an education and she picked up an idea that no one will ever love me and like me. 
Then again, we talk about, I work with people in drug rehabs, and they've been raped, they've been beaten, they've been killed, they kill people, they witness killings. And the reason why people have addictions is they use something to escape the pain they have within. That's it. They use it to numb themselves out. That's, and of course, you know, the guy who's, you know, this guy's from Afghanistan, he killed people, see people killed, and he, you know, he has high anxiety, he can't deal with the stuff, and so he goes to methamphetamines. He's using drugs to numb his pain. He gets arrested, thrown in jail, and now he's in a rehab. And the reason why he's using the drugs is because he couldn't deal with the trauma in his head. So his, his brain would pop pictures in his head and it would just scare the bejeebies out of him. And in order to numb the pain, he'd have to find something else. And that's what drugs did, or fighting, or arguing, or drinking, or eating, or sexing, whatever it is. And so he comes in and, you know, this is a real deal. I mean, not that, not that yours isn't, because it is. All these impact us, whether you had a big brother or big sister who didn't like you and they were mean to you, or a mom or sister, they impact us. And this is just an education on how to survive a world you didn't know existed until it was exposed to you. So he comes in, he goes, man, I've never told anybody this stuff. I said, you don't have to tell me. Why don't we do this? Won't you pick the worst one? Don't tell me anything about it and I'll help you change it. He says, okay, so we go to the worst one. He, he picked it. I had no idea what it was. About five minutes later, he says, I can't make it bother me. I said, well, try harder. He says, I can't. Now, again, as I said, okay, tell me the story. So now he tells me the story. He goes, it doesn't even seem like it was me. Now, before that, he was not feeling too good. You could see him with tears in his eyes as he's thinking about it. And we get done, it's not there. And so this impacted, he educated the world, impacted this world to see things differently. Each and every one of us may have not had big traumas or may have some big traumas, but these experiences of witnessing things that you shouldn't have heard or had a crazy mom or crazy dad or abusive whatever trauma, whatever you went through, it's over today, but your brain kept it. It is the reason why you act and feel the way you do is because of these trainings you're not broken. Your brain is not screwed up. It just has a system that's trying to keep you safe and also in alignment to the shit that happened to you because you don't want it to happen again. And after we got done, he goes, you know, I, I've been waking up every night, six or seven times a night, every night, because again, he was in war. He had all this trauma. And uh, he says, you know, even when I smoke outside, you know, I'm just trembling like something bad's going to happen. And so the first time he said, I can't sleep at night. So I just, work, I just worked on memories. I didn't address that because the next day he comes in. He goes, you know, I used to wake up six times a night. Last night I slept all the way through. All night long I slept. Because, you know, when you're in war, you're always in war. And he's been out of war for years, 10 years. But it was still real. He says, you know, I'm out there smoking and I feel so high anxiety. And I said, well, let me explain how the brain works. You're sitting at the kitchen table. Dad comes in and punches you in the face. Or hit you across the head with a banana. Now, if you're at the table, guess what you're thinking? Next thing is going to happen, you're going to get hit again. He goes, I know what it is. I said, what is it? He goes, I'm there in, Af I'm in, I'm in Afghanistan. Me and my buddies at night, we're leaning against a Humvee, smoking our cigarette. And I look up, and I see all these tracer rounds coming right at us. I mean, they're getting ready to get killed. So they jumped underneath the Humvee. Ding, 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 ding. They had all the bullets hitting that thing. It saved his life. So his brain was still holding on to this defense. After smoking, his brain says, smoking, something bad's going to happen. Guess what? We address the memory. He can smoke and no problem. This is how your brain works. There's links, there's triggers, there are emotional conditions. You got the mother, the brother, the father, the sister, the aunt, the grandfather, whoever it is. School trauma. <laughs> School trauma is a big one. It's affected my life and some of you have it too. So again, there is hope, be honest with you, there is hope. We all have a post-traumatic stressed defense system working within us, trying to keep us safe. So, are you ready to clean that stuff up? <laughs> Am I, does, this, does this make 100% sense? Is that right? Does that make good sense? Is it practical? Is it logical? All right, that's what we want, good sense. Now, and, and, and you know, a lot of times we're gonna work with emotional dynamics within the family. Which means, let's say for example, you got mom and dad. 
Let's see, your mom's a twin sister. And you know what twins do, a lot of them, not all of them? They fight a lot. Well, that's what they do. <laughs> fight a lot. And of course, they say, witness this. They can learn to be a fighter too by watching this experience. And I guess, guess what? Mom's going to use her skills on her daughter or her son. So this is going to be emotional condition. You're always supposed to fight. Always got to have an argument. Or you've always been picked on. You always felt like no one loved you. You know, your little brother was born and they took the limelight and you felt, I'm not important. I'm not loved anymore. These happen all the time. So what we can do is clean up your story. Clean up your story, clean up your life, and have something better. You know, this is a great journey for you. Everybody's on a different level, depending on how much you've been working on yourself and how many changes you've made. But one thing you must do is stay with it. I assure you, this will work. Now, sometimes you have to work it in the areas that you need to work on and if you get to where it's too big or too scary, we have practitioners trained in my system that will help you clean up the rough stuff and then you can take over with the rest. Does that sound good?